in Wonderland podcast. Uh, this is a place for you to open your mind and let your sense of wonder, imagination and curiosity loose. I'm your host, Georgia Alice, and today I'm joined by Isabella Van Zulen. Now, Isabella has been training women for the past five years, and she's really passionate about helping helping women create a healthy mind and body and to become their best selves. So welcome, Isabella. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I love the name of your show. It's so creative. <laughs> Thank you. I've been blessed with a surname that worked really well with the titles. So yeah, <laughs> pretty cool. Great. Well pretty done. Cool. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so let's get curious about Isabella. So Isabella, tell us a little bit about... What, what it is, actually, here's the question that I ask everyone on the podcast. And this question is, if I was, let's imagine I'm a seven-year-old girl and I bump into you in the playground and we're talking and I say to you, Isabella, what is it that you do? How, what do you do for a living? What, how would you answer it to a child what you do? Um, I would say I help people feel good about who they are on the inside. Yeah. And how do you do that? How do I do that? I help them move their bodies. I help them love their bodies. I help them, um, you know, feel positive about life. Um, yeah, and about um, their lifestyle and what they do and who they are. So, yeah. Isn't that a beautiful thing when we simplify what we do? It actually gets to the, the, the crux of it. It really gets down to the purpose of what it is that we're, that we're doing and why we do what we do. So my question for you is, because I find it, always find it really interesting in how people get into the field that they're in. So what was it originally that got you into, say, so five years now in uh, the fitness industry and your business is called I Want Fitness? So what was the turning point? What got you into doing this in, in the fitness arena? And what were you doing prior to that? I um, I was very active as a child, playing netball and, you know, always outside with my, with my siblings. Um, and I guess um, sort of moved into, I started in hospitality and then I went into sort of bookkeeping after that. And I, I knew there was something out there for me. I just didn't know what it was. And it was like I was just putting my feelers out there. I'll try little things here and there. And um, when I, um, I've had two... I had two young children, obviously, they're now a bit older. They're still youngish, I guess. Um, yeah, and I found it quite a struggle to sort of uh, get that fitness momentum going and, you know, um, doing that thing for myself. It is, quite, it is quite demanding being a parent and especially when you've got little, little kids. Um, you, you, you put your own needs last, you know, so... I did join a gym and I just sort of felt like it was, I was just kind of just slugging it out, not really knowing what I was doing. I wasn't committed. Um, I sort of felt like I looked like an idiot. I felt intimidated by the mirrors and the guys, you know, looking at their muscles. And, <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I didn't go. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll go in the morning and then the morning the alarm would go off and I'll be like, nah, I'll go. Um you know, I'll go in the afternoon after, you know, before school pickup and, um, or kinder pickup or whatever it was and um, didn't go. And then I'll, oh, I'll go tonight when hubby gets home, didn't go. And then it just, you know, next thing you know, you're not consistent and yeah, not motivated, not inspired. So I was lucky enough to, I thought I'll engage a personal trainer, to see if this will work. And I met this lady, um, Belinda Carusi, who um, is quite well known in, in the fitness industry. Um, as far as I know, and she sort of started training me, but I, I only did it once, once a month because I couldn't afford it. So I was like, oh, I've got to, um, 
you know, I'll just, I'll give me a program and I'll just do it myself. So anyway, so she showed me how to do some things and I guess I was sort of a little bit consistent, but sort of not really because I wasn't meeting anyone at the gym. So it was like, oh, this is really annoying, but you know, I'm paying a membership I'm not using. And then she said, oh, Isabella, I'm starting a boot camp for women. Do you want to join? I'm like, yes, I'm there. So I quit the gym and I went with her and that's when things really changed for me. And I really found out more about nutrition and I was, you know, um, able to, you know, my exercise, my fitness went out through the roof and I was just a lot happier and healthier just within myself and the women around me were having great, um, you know, great results also with benefits and around, you know, looking after their kids. But that's where it was like, maybe I could do this, you know, this is, this looks really rewarding. You know, this looks like having an impact on people and I, I don't know. And I, I guess in a way I was sort of, Oh, I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> it was, it was kind of like you're putting yourself out there really and being in front of a group of women and they have to listen to what you've got to tell them and do what. Yeah. So there was an element of fear around that too. Yeah. A bit of um, soul searching as well. And probably some of that, imposter syndrome am i good enough and all those sort of things that yes yeah yeah and who would want to listen to me and you know yeah. and she just went go for it go for it you know do your course do the personal training course you know work for me she said <laughs> anyway I, <laughs> I did the course and halfway through the course she her demographic changed she set up shop like out of town so she, there, was the, there was a number of people who kind of left in the lurch because they sort of found boot camp and really worked for them and then they didn't want to go to the gym. They, didn't, they felt what I felt was that it was just, you know, pointless waste of time for them. So that's where I was really lucky and I started my business when she kind of up and left mm. and they came on board with me and helped me with my um, business, which was great. And I guess that's, you know, I just really saw the yeah i just i just saw there was a something missing there was something missing in the market that was um tailored for women because women just want to be um they just they want help they want support they don't want to be a number they don't want to feel like they're intimidated or judged or for what they look like or you know they want to be supported so that's where that's kind of where the passion came from there and that's Did where... you notice, because one of the things you said a little earlier was around you went to the boot camp and, camp and everything changed for you. What Do you know specifically what it was that all of a sudden you felt like this boot camp is better than the gym? What was it that was going on at the boot camp that the gym wasn't offering? I, I, went, I met like-minded friends, so people who are um, also there for the same reasons as me. Um, I was meeting like it was like I had an, a I had a date with my friends. So with the gym, you kind of just go and do your own thing. But I had people there waiting for me, um, expecting me to be there, and um, it helped me stay consistent. So yeah. that's where it was kind of like a no brainer. It was like I've got to get to boot camp. This is my thing. Yeah. So it, be yeah. it became community and tribe almost, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Yeah, how good's that? Because a lot of the times we forget about the the need for being connected in so many different areas of our life, and and some people need that connection. Some people are quite disciplined to be able to do things on their own. But we're not all, you know, not all cut from the same cloth, are we? No, exactly. And you've just got to find what works for you. And for, some people are really driven to go to the gym and do their thing. Um, for me, I just found that um, uninv uninviting. And yeah, unmotivating. So that's why that sort of that's how I fell into <laughs> boot camp for women. So yeah. So you so you started your own business. So how did how did you get that off the ground? Because you know our listeners, there could be listeners out there thinking, oh, I wouldn't mind starting a business, and I don't know where to start and what to do. They may be thinking of doing something very similar to what you're doing. So what what were the some of the steps you took to get this business off the ground? Um, I was, I, w I think networking is really important knowing like, yeah, just really getting out there and meeting people or connecting with people is really important. Um, because I guess with where I was at, I was in the school community, people already knew me as a mum 
and you know our kids were playing together and so you know we I'd already developed some connection through that so that really I think that really helped um, and having the connection with the school because I run out of a school um, they really supported me as well so just you know making sure that you do value those relationships and connections that you have because if you sort of burn your bridges with people um, you know that's not really going to serve you if that makes sense yeah, yeah absolutely I love what you say there about not burning your bridges because I know for myself you know I run my own business and often time my work comes through unexpected sources and people that I've worked with in the past that um, maybe I didn't get along with, but I never burned a bridge with them or I kept the communications open or whatever it is. And you just never know when somebody's going to turn up and knock on your door and ask for your help. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, really good. So you've um, so networking is something that, that helped you get there, which is awesome. Mm. And also you, you went and got skills. You went and trained. That's to right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So when you first started, because I know your your mission and your purpose now, um, is it different from when you first started? Ah, uh, I could have given this a bit more thought. I guess, it, yeah, yes. I guess I was just um, there training women and yeah. I guess, yeah, I just, whereas now it's more about empowering them to make their own decisions and be in charge of their lives you know so that's where the shift has gone to i guess yeah, yeah. Do, can, can you more deep and meaningful purpose than when i first started yeah do you know what caused that shift for you to go from hey i'm just helping women get fit just turning up training earn a bit of cash starting a business to now hang on, I really had this opportunity to make a difference, to empower women, to, you know, be the best versions of themselves. Was there anything that caused that, anything personal for you that caused that trigger for you to want more for your clients? Um, that's a really good question. <laughs> I can't, nothing's really standing out. I think over time, just seeing some of, the advertising out there just sort of triggered for me not yeah triggered I'm like why why this why this mm. ab cruncher why you know why this why are they playing on you know uh, women's insecurities to you know sell this product that really they don't need you know that's so things like that really sort of made me think oh there's got to be more to there's got to be more to it than just, you know, um, how you look, um, you know, there's got to be more to, yeah, I guess that's the drive is mm. helping women realise that it doesn't have to be a hard slog. It can be enjoyable. It can be, um, you know, just tune in with your body, stop fighting with it, you know, just let go, liberate. Um, so I guess that's where, even just saying those words make me feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, make me feel good, you know? Yeah. So let's unpack that a little further. Stop fighting with your body. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean that we're sort of, there's a lot of comparison and judging going on amongst women um, on themselves, hating on themselves and punishing their bodies to you know because they feel like it's not good enough or they feel like it's not shaped the right way or um yeah it's just there's a lot of body hatred self-hatred mm. for yeah it's kind of like you know why are you doing this to me type things you know beating yourself up um so i guess that's where i just see that as a really ineffective way of um achieving a balanced healthy balanced lifestyle yeah so um, if, we've, if we've got some listeners at the moment listening to this and they're they're women and they're sitting going yeah i'm hating my i look in the mirror and i really don't like what's reflecting back to me um 
you know, and I am hating myself a little bit. So I force myself to go on diets and they don't work. And then I sign up for the gym and I don't turn up and I just, you know, nothing fits me and all these sort of things. From your experience of, you know, five years in the industry and working with women, what would you, what would you, uh, what sort of advice or tools or things could somebody, what would be the first steps to start that hating on yourself? What's, what would some, some advice be? Um, oh, I think some of your advice is really good here as far as changing your mindset. And it's when I say change your mindset is um, I remember when I first met you and we did, um, you know, writing down those negative thoughts that I had around starting my business and turning them into positive statements. So, um, you know, even with my programs, I get people to, or women to write down what words they're using or what statements they're using that are not supporting a love your body mindset. So, and then flipping that around. And as much as, as much as it doesn't, feel right when you say things like I love my body my body is beautiful I'm amazing I'm enough you know as much as that doesn't feel right just being consistent with that it might bring you to tears you know mm -hmm. because you've been so engrossed in this negative mindset that you know just even saying those words are going to be a massive a massive hill to overcome, but you've just you've just got to trust that in the process, if you know what I mean. And that's what you teach as well. And I love that's where I think you really helped me around the business side of things. You know, change my mindset and believe in what what I could do. So, yeah. So I'm living proof. I'm living proof. That, you know, yeah, absolutely. And. You know, it's really interesting because we get bombarded constantly. Like you mentioned before, you know, the, the ab sculpting machines and all these things that have got these really thin women already on the ab sculptor or whatever it might be. And we see, you know, the perfect bodies in advertising. There has been a shift though. I've noticed that in some, uh, there was a, a recent ad on TV, I think it was a bra ad, and they've got women of all shapes and sizes, which is really beautiful because they're beginning to honour and understand that we are all different and unique. We're not all these... Barbie dolls that come out of a manufacturing plant with exactly the same um, hip and waist measurements yes. and, and bust measurements, right? And yes. unfortunately, we get bombarded with that in magazines and in the media. Everywhere. 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 <laughs> Not just, you know, in the media. It's, it's at home too. It's the way your in-laws might talk about you or your children or... You know, your friends might say something or, you know, it's just, it's everywhere. It's mm. just, it's too much. It's too much. It's, yeah. yeah. And it's society and it's a cultural paradigm that needs to shift for all of us. And I think what you're doing is helping to create that shift uh, to help, to help people understand that, well, that's just a program we've been given and our parents and our family and all that, they're doing that because that is what they believe. They've been bombarded by the media as well. And now they're seeing that to be a certain shape size is, is healthy. So what are your thoughts around health versus thin? So what, because you're working with people and a lot of them are going to come to, I need to be thin or I need to lose weight to whatever it might be. But there's, I think there's a difference around being healthy as opposed to being thin. That's right. Yeah. One, one member told me that, um, I remember her telling me, she said, um, you know, what I love now is that I'm, I'm strong and I'm fit. Um, and when I used to be thin or thinner, I actually didn't have the strength. I felt I actually wasn't feeling healthy. I felt sick. So, you know, that's just, um, that's one thing is that just because someone looks thin doesn't mean doesn't mean they're healthy mm. um so that's where you know then you're right there is a shift happening there is a movement um you know and i'm kind of transitioning i'm still learning there's a new language that's around you know how you talk about this because um there is a lot of uh emphasis on how you look and or trying to look a certain way saying that you're not, you know, it's saying you're not perfect right now. And that's really, that's kind of really sad. 
because mm. it's you know it makes people always seek and seek 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 for that external uh answer what do you see as the major challenges for for women at the moment based on what society's you know thrusting upon us in relation to how we need to look and how we need to be what do you think some of the challenges are oh, actually what are you experiencing from your clients what are some of the challenges why do they come to you okay some of the challenges i'm experiencing is that um they want to feel good and they want to feel better but there's still that underlying i need to look a certain way um, so i guess that's a real challenge because it's so ingrained mm. so just trying to break just trying to break that down for them uh, but not because obviously i'll be challenging their values and their beliefs so that's where it's going to be i'm going to have to gently sort of direct them in a different way um, but in a loving way and not in you know so that's something that i'm really conscious of and um women come to me because they think they want a weight loss result uh, but then I tell them that there's actually another way. And sometimes for some certain members, it's kind of a relief that they don't have to follow any rules around food or exercise, that it's just do what's right for you. And I'll guide them through that. So it's not like they're left to just do whatever they want. Um, I still, we still give nutrition support. We still give, you know, obviously the next program, I'm going to have the mindset coach, which is you come on and just help with changing that mindset or understanding why we might sabotage our mm. goals or what we're trying to achieve. So, yeah, so that's, it is a big challenge um, yeah. because you're, I am going against the grain, but there is a movement and I have support. I've got a mentor um, who's helping me around that too. So. It's, it's going to be a big shift and I may lose some people, um, but I'll also gain people. But I've got to go with what my heart's saying and what, yeah. yeah. So I guess so that's... It sounds like that this might not be all of the clients that come to you, but do you find that they're looking for a magic pill to fix their life through maybe if only I was weighing a certain amount or doing a, you know, exercising more, or maybe this, this and this, I can actually, you know, have a better life. Is that part of the underlying reason that some people come to you as well? Yes, but that's, but then I've got to, I've just realised that I've got to be more clear in my messaging, in my marketing. Yeah. So I guess that's where, that's what I'm working on at the moment and my language as well. So mm -hmm. just making sure that people are clear and also when I speak to people who potential clients that that's that I'm not a weight loss focused trainer I'm you know I focus on well-being and health and um, you know are you okay with that approach you know so yeah yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be extremely holistic and beneficial for people to you know potentially come to you because maybe they do the goal is to lose some weight but you know, losing the weight, there's more to that. There's more of understanding who they are, their beliefs about themselves and potentially why they are carrying that extra on what they might perceive as unhealthy weight. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, helping them, helping them through that, through, you know, lots of different tools. As you said, there's the physical, like the, the, the training, then there's the diet and then there's the mental and the mindset aspect that you've touched on that I believe from what I've experienced, uh, cause I, I go to a gym, I box, and I have a, a boxing trainer, never spoken about mindset to me. Now, for me, I get it. So I know when I'm not doing something what I should be, I know I, I notice the thoughts that are going on in my head and go, well, any wonder I'm not, I haven't got that punch right or that whatever, right, because I'm dissing myself the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but imagine, imagine if you were working out with someone and they couldn't do something or they weren't they weren't uh, making healthy choices in their life consistently. Well, then we start thinking about, if you were just to ask them, well, what story are you telling yourself? Mm. You know, what is it that when, you're, when you say you want to do something yet you're not doing it, what's the underlying belief system about yourself, your self-worth? Yeah, um, exactly. So it's really beautiful that you're, you're moving into that area and really starting to touch on the holistic approach. You know, but it's almost body, mind and spirit, isn't it? Well, that's it. Well, I mean, it's all interconnected, as you know. So, you know, why are we ignoring that? Why mm. are we not working with that? And yeah. I know that, you know, maybe I'm not qualified 
as a counsellor or a psychologist or anything like that. But I do, I'm in a unique position here. I've got mm. many women coming through and, um, you know, why, why would I not, you know, why would I, why would I ignore that? It's so, it's part of, it's part of the process. Yeah. And, you know, and I find that women who hate on themselves, they actually, or their bodies, they actually don't, they don't get anywhere. Mm. It's more about being at peace with where you're at right now. I mean, I've just been through, you know, a cancer journey myself and I haven't got the level of fitness that I did before that um, cancer diagnosis. But I'm just like, well, I've just been through so much. Why would I now just put my body through a grueling process of trying to look a certain way when I made it through, you know, and I'm all clear and I've got my family that love me and I've got my husband still here. I've got, you know, everyone's just so happy that I've come out um, still, you know, still alive, obviously, and not still uh, breathing. Yes, yeah. we, we have you at the other end here, so you are you are still uh, still alive, which is fantastic. So I guess you know that makes me sort of think. Well, there's more to it than you now. There's more to me than the number on the scales. There's more to me than just you know looking a certain way because I am a trainer, um, or you know the number of, that I wear, you know, size 12 or whatever it is, like it's, there's more to me than that. Yeah, absolutely. And it sounds like there's a hell of a lot more to you based on what you just, you know, you mentioned the, the journey you've been on and the, the insights you can gain from that because you're, you were a personal trainer before your diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah. And so then you've had your diagnosis and do you think that has anything to do with you potentially changing the focus of what you're about and what you're offering? I think I've always had the focus that they, it was always there, but it, I wasn't able to express it or I didn't know how to work around it or tackle certain things. Mm -hmm. So I got a bit thrown and I'm just like, Oh, how do I work my way through? And I guess I got to a point um, yeah, so I guess going through the journey of um, the cancer, the breast cancer and then the, the treatment and everything and now coming out the other end and I guess it's just put my heels into the sand or what do you call it, The dig my feet in and just go, yeah. right, you know, I need to now step up and, um, yeah, and find the people that are going to help me through this maze of, you know, body positivity and healthy mind and body um, journey, I guess, yeah. and spreading it's the like, word. It's like your story has given you permission to to share and allow other women to honour their body and, and honour who they are um, without having to buy into the into society's paradigm of what, yeah. we be and what we need to be. Look, I find even personally myself, you know, I um, I lost some weight last year and I put some kilos back on and my, I was actually today at a, walking to a meeting and my pants were feeling a bit tight. I'm like, damn, I've got to lose a couple more kilos. Well, why don't I just go and buy a bigger size pair of pants? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> it'd be a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. That's right. Or there's, you can, there's, there's a lot of things at play too. I, mean, I know too, like um, some of my jackets don't fit me, but I forgot that I've started working out and boxing again and all of a sudden my, my arms and my shoulders are getting bigger, so therefore they're tighter across the back. You know, there's all these little things, all these little mind games that I think, oh, I'm putting on weight again. Well, actually, no, I'm getting stronger. Yes. And you, you mentioned that before around, you know, really getting clear on what it is that you want. So when I think about why do I train, there's a number of reasons I train and it's actually not to look a certain way. It's because I want to do something today that my future self is going to look back and thank me for. So I see people around me that are a lot older than me and they're frail and they're falling over and they're needing walking sticks or whatever it might be. But if I can honour my body now and strengthen it and put things into place now that become habitual for me, when I'm older, I'm hoping that that's going to work in my favour. You know, I don't like, I actually don't really like working out, but the motivation is my future self 
going, thank God you did that. Thank God you got up at 6.30 yep. on a Saturday and you went to boxing. Thank God you do yoga every few days. Thank God you do this. And it's, it is very much around that strength, thing, the strength. Yep. And I think some of the benefit is, well, yeah, I might end up with losing some weight. Or I might not. Mm. As long as I'm strong for the future. Yeah. I love that. I think that's a nice little mantra too. What can you do today that your future self is going to help you for? Thank you for. Uh, So you you also work around the nutrition piece. Yes. So I use that analogy of, you know, help yourself out for the week ahead. So let's say, you know, do a couple of things on the Sunday. No, I'm not talking like a massive cook-up where, you know, you're spending hours and hours in the kitchen for four hours, you know, making a hundred meals and, you know, sweating it out. Because for me, for many parents or mums, um, Sunday is family day. You know, you want to spend time with your family because you're working and slugging it out all week, um, you know, taking kids everywhere, blah, blah, blah. It's, that's where we get, that's where we come together, my kids and my husband and I, and we do something on a Sunday. So if in the morning, let's say I'm awake before everyone else, yeah, I'm going to make maybe a zucchini slice. It's going to help me out with breakfast or lunch throughout the week. So again, like you were saying, helping out your future self, but not just in the long term, next week, you know, mm. or just doing something small that's going to just help help you, you know, get some freezers, uh, freezer meals happening, but just maybe cook double batch for a bolognese and, you know, that night where you're like feeling like you're short on time, well, you've got, you've got something there so it's just about being stress-free and and yeah and building on that strength so you can run around with the kids and yeah do all those so you can have that life that you that life that you want I love that we've sort of headed down the direction around you know planning for your future or setting yourself up for success in the future whatever that might look like and I was uh listening to I think it might have been a YouTube uh video or something of Zig Ziglar he was giving a talk around goal setting actually. And um, he'd, he'd actually lost a lot of weight. So he was overweight. He was obese. So it was like, yeah, love my body. It's actually not healthy at this size. So he realized that he'd been making decisions every day leading up to becoming obese. So his, the decisions he'd made in the past got him to where he was today. So he was choosing the wrong food. He was choosing not to exercise. Um, He was choosing these things that got him to where he was. So he thought, now I have to choose differently. It's about that choice. And knowing that when he would go for a choice of a certain food, is this going to help me towards my goal or not? So when you have a goal of health, a goal of strength, and for some people, there will be a goal of weight loss because it might be doctor's orders. I've got family members who have been told they need to lose weight. So when you have those goals, that actually forces you to have a make an advanced decision, doesn't it? Mm. You make it a decision in advance. So if my goal, if I've been ordered or been recommended, doctors don't normally order us, but if I've been recommended that I do need to actually lose some weight for my health, as soon as I decide that I'm going to do that, when you're out at a party or you're about to order dinner, you've already decided that you're going to eat healthy. You don't need to sit there and look through the menu, go, I just know I'm going to go straight to the healthy section. Yeah, exactly. Future yeah. decisions. So do you find people potentially struggle with making those adjustments that we're talking about, like adjusting to set themselves up for success? Of course. Of course they do because they they get bombarded with so many messages that conflicting or it's, you know, it's like, Oh, I don't like avocado. I don't like kale. So what, you know, but it tells me I should eat that, you know, like (laughs) it's because that's where the rules come in or they feel like they have to follow a certain way of doing things and it doesn't sit well with them. So or they think that. What do you recommend for someone like that? So let's say, you know, you're, I'm coming to one of your boot camps and you're talking about nutrition and you're recommending, avocado and I go oh, yeah right I hate avocado but this is the rule maybe I should force myself to like it what are, what are the things that how do you help someone through that what do you- um I'm not specific I don't say you have to have avocado to have a great nutritional men you know um intake so it's about sort of I I'd, I use food groups so it's like you know vegetables you know try and aim for this many serves 
brute aim for this many serves, but it, it's not, you know, they say eat the rainbow, but you know, I don't, I don't need a lot of fruit myself. So I, you know, I have had to learn some new, um, you know, try some different things. And if it doesn't work, if you're not really going for it. Well then why are we doing this to ourselves? You don't want to, you want to enjoy the process. Yeah. You don't want to be like, yeah. So take away the rules and just do what feels right. But that's going to just maybe look at food from a nutritional point of view. Is this going to nu be nutritious or is this going to nourish my body? Mm. And if the answer is no, then choose to eat that and not feel guilty about it. Yeah. Don't, you know, have your donut. If you don't, you know, it's not going to serve you nutritionally, but you know, why look at it and go, oh, how many calories has this got? And then eat it and then feel bad. Mm. Eat it and enjoy it. And just eat it, enjoy it. And then go, okay, I'm moving on. I'm going to do better next meal or yeah. my snack. You know, yeah. don't wait till Monday. Today, do it today. Yeah, yeah good. Or I'll go for a walk or something like that to distract me or yeah whatever just you know, have something yeah it's, it's it actually comes down to knowing yourself and knowing what some of your triggers are as well isn't it so um and it's really interesting how the mind does work because i um i went on a little donut binge not long ago as in i really started liking donuts again i hadn't eaten them for years so whenever i was out running an errand i'd go into the little bakery and get one of their little crunchy donuts with the icing on them and then i realized I started paying attention to when I ate something, how I felt afterwards. So this is self-awareness. Yes, yeah, mindful eating. That's mindful. right. And I went, hmm, I actually have no energy after that. I actually have, uh, it actually makes me feel rather cranky. So I now associated donuts with something negative. So even though I might have that calling, yeah. I actually don't eat it. I'm now aware of, I don't want to feel like what it actually does to yeah. me if I have a donut. And um, so that was really interesting to to Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, mm. to sort of, um, you know, associate a negative habit or a, a not so self-serving habit with a negative experience or mindset or thought around that or feeling. And, you know, because you can, you can talk yourself into eating whatever you want you can talk yourself into eating chocolate you know that's why we have that those messages on on the tv with you know oh you know here's your dessert and then you're like, oh, <laughs> i'm feeling like dessert now and you know you start looking uh, through one of the easiest things i was able to stop eating was and i'm, I'm sorry cadbury but cadbury chocolate because i would eat cadbury chocolate and feel ill afterwards and so i just cannot eat it anymore and which is wonderful like if you know you're at it Christmas time and they've got all those Cadbury chocolates everywhere in boxes. Yeah. I just I can't eat them. But so you I, don't but you don't you're not like feeling bad about that. You're kinda like, I actually don't want that. No. I, I actually don't okay. want that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I don't have to have that because I know. But that's come from it's come from the mindfulness uh, the mindful sorry, the mindful eating years ago when I noticed how I felt afterwards. Yeah, And so um, I think that you've, you've actually given me a good reminder to start doing that again, start being really mindful of how I feel after I've eaten something. And if I'm not feeling good, well, then ma make a note of that and then probably cut it out of my diet as well. It's my body telling me that it's not exactly. delivering energy and nutrition to me. That's awesome. And that's yeah. listening to your body and your body cues as well. Mm. So that's really good. Your body knows what to do. Yeah. And we forget that. We forget that our body is this amazing intelligence system. That's right. Uh, yeah. And you reminded me of something, another thing I was listening to the other day, and I think this is a big, great conversation, something for us to probably finish up on and you can add in something here. So I was listening to Dr. Joe Dispenza and he was asked a question. So those people who don't know Dr. Joe Dispenza, he's, um, he does a lot of work around neuroscience, meditation and and health and all these different things. But he, he had suffered uh, a bicycle accident, cycling accident, I think when he was 26, I think he's in his 50s now. So it was quite a long time ago. And he was, um, he healed himself without surgery. So he had spine uh, injury and they said, look, you're never going to walk again. And he healed himself through, through using the power of his mind, but also diet. And someone asked him, they said, well, what did, you know, what do you recommend for a diet? And he said, when you're 
mind is in the right frame, when you're in the right frame of mind, your diet really doesn't matter. But if you are unwell and unhealthy, you need to get good sources of food into you. He said, during my time of healing, I ate raw food and really healthy food. So my body, which knows how to heal, had everything it needed to heal. And he said, when I was fit and healthy again, I just went back to eating what I normally ate. But he used that time as a time to honour his body and honour the healing mechanism within it because the body knows how to get to our ideal weight that is perfect for us. Our body knows how to, how to heal. And I think that ties in really nicely with some of the things that you're doing with women. Yep. That's yeah. an amazing story. Yeah, and it's, it's just... We, we forget because a lot of people nowadays, there's so much going on. Should I be vegan? Should I be paleo, um, keto? You know, yeah. there's all these different things and it gets so confusing. But here's the thing. Your body knows what's right for it. Mm. Just got to listen. Just be in tune with it. Yeah. Intuitive eating. That's right. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's not an easy, it's not an easy thing to implement, especially if you've, You've uh, always looked at food as good or bad or healthy and unhealthy or, you know, you've got these rules, diet rules ingrained in your mind. So mm. moving to listening to your body for some may be quite challenging and it may need, um, you know, some shifting and reminding on a, on a constant, you know, until it becomes the norm, yeah. you know, on a constant basis. Yeah. So what would you recommend for somebody who wants to start, you know, moving into what you, what you teach? So moving into being more mindful with what they're putting in their body, how to, you know, wanting to move into strengthening themselves and creating a, a better future for themselves in the present moment. What would be some of the tips, tools, strategies, tactics? What would you recommend they do? What would, what could they start with? Yep. Um, digital detox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I was not expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> stop looking, stop following people who don't make you feel good about yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Instagram, Facebook, um, just that are not going to support your new way of doing things. Um, seek out uh, a non, a non diet dietitian um, and start, you know, maybe chat with them about how you can you know, where you're at and what sort of things you can do there. What did, um, can I just interrupt? Because I've never heard of the term a non-diet dietitian and I'm sure there's some listeners are going, what the, <laughs> what's a non-diet dietitian and where would they, how would you Google that <laughs> to find someone? Um, that's really interesting because I actually, I actually don't know how to come, how to find them, but yeah, you can probably Google non-diet dietitian. There might be some websites out there or some dietitians out there who are, you know, um, promoting that. Um, so maybe just, or if you could just ring some dietitians and ask them, are you a non-diet dietitian? Yeah. Um, and they sort of help like we, you know, with, they're talking about letting your body be the weight that it wants to be um, and not putting too many rules. You know, they obviously help with eating disorders, um, trying to help people get out of the obsessive nature of diet culture, you know, obsessing over numbers, calories, um, uh, yeah, trying to get get people to take away the the labelling of food as naughty and cheap meals and things like that. So, yeah, um, so I would seek one of those or follow um, body positive and body uh, body positive image people on Instagram, Facebook, and just yeah, I think that's a really good positive step. Don't buy magazines that talk about, you know, oh, look at this celebrity, you know, all that sort of... Lost their baby belly in two weeks. Yes, get rid of that. Don't even put, give them any money. Just don't. <laughs> don't go there. That is so... I love that the first thing you said was, you know, do a digital detox. And that digital, I think it's probably more a media detox because there's print media, there's there's social media, there's the news media, and, yeah, we are bombarded with it. So what a great tip so digital detox find yourself a non-diet dietitian what else um there's they're starting to pop up around the place but maybe you could find a trainer that doesn't talk about weight um 
yeah, or restrictive dieting or anything like that. So um, it's they're out there. You just, it just might take a few goes to find the right person. So don't give up if one person's if they make you feel bad about what you're doing, or you know if they're measuring you in some way that um, is about your how you look, then maybe you need to move on to find someone else. Yeah. Great advice. So if any of our listeners would like to reach out and get hold of you, what's the best method to reach out to you um, and maybe get some advice or maybe they want to come and work with you? You know, some people probably travel to come and uh, come to one of your boot camps. I know, you know, it's very tempting for me. Oh, I love it. How do do people get hold of you? Welcome anytime. Welcome anytime. (laughs) How Um, do people get hold of you? So my website is um, iwatchfitness.com.au. all my details are there. You can email, call. Um, yeah, that's yeah. You, I've got my timetable there. You can see all the sessions that we're running. Um, yeah, that's. And you're right. talking about you know encouraging people to follow people who have a positive body. I'm going to say positive body vibe or mantra or passion or purpose. You're one of those people. So on social media, if they want to follow you on social media, how do they do that? Yep, I want fitness MLB for Melbourne. <laughs> on Instagram, so it's all one word. And I want fitness on Facebook. Facebook. On Facebook as well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time. It's oh, been an absolute you. pleasure and delight chatting to you about about these, yeah, these these things that we do to ourselves unnecessarily and also just some really easy, simple tools and tips to be able to move to move through that as well. So thank you so much for your insights and for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. That was an inspiring conversation with Isabella. And uh, having seen Isabella and what, she, what she's going through and the beautiful passion she has for helping us, uh, women and men, but mainly women, to be able to really honour who we are and, and honour the physical the physical person, the physicality of who we are. So to, to finish up on this podcast, I'd like to um, just remind you that there are, there are three aspects to you. You are a physical being, so that's your body. You have an intellect, so that's the way that you think. And you, you are spirit as well, and that's the energy you bring to the table. And someone like Isabella is bringing all of those three things together in her programs and in her training. So if you really are looking for a way to capture the true uniqueness of who you are and to be the best version of yourself in all of those aspects, I highly recommend jumping on board and following Isabella on social media. I do know that on the 22nd of October, for those of you who are Melbourne based in Australia and living in the eastern suburbs out in the Wonturna Ringwood area. She's about to launch an eight week program that will cover all of those aspects. And uh, luckily for me, I get to I get to chat around around the mindset, around the intellect, and around the programming for us. And I'll um, I'd love to see you in that program, and uh, we can delve a little bit deeper. So thank you once again for listening to the podcast. If you're listening on iTunes, please. Give us a a rating. If you're enjoying what you're hearing, a five-star rating and a comment would be wonderful. Hit us up with some comments. If you're listening on Anchor, just give us an applause. And remember, if you want to hear more of the guests that we have coming up for you, make sure you subscribe on the platform that you're listening to because I have some amazing guests coming up for you and I'm really looking forward to sharing those stories with you. Enjoy your day and remember... Stay curious. Today is turning into the most curious adventure I've ever had.